How's it going, guys? I'm Mike Dwyer from the Bunker Recordings and BetterMixes.com, and today I want to show you guys one of my favorite new plugins, Soothe, or more specifically, Soothe 2. I've been using Soothe since the first version came out, maybe like two years ago or something, and to me it was an absolute game changer. So I just want to show it to you guys, show you how it works, and show you some of the ways I use it in my mixes, so you can see if it's something you might want to try out. So this is it right here. Basically what Soothe is, is a dynamic resonance remover. So basically you can think of it kind of like a dynamic EQ, and it's got like a billion bands that you can set really simply with just a few controls. So we're gonna dive right into an audio example, because I think this is easiest to understand when you actually see it in action. So I was just working on something where I have some really harsh sounding guitars. Let me just play those for you real quick. So yeah, I don't know about you, but those like genuinely hurt my ears. They've got a lot of upper mid-range that's really kind of irritating and not very pleasant to listen to. Now, obviously, you could tackle this problem with EQ, and you could definitely make it a lot better than it is now, but ultimately, I think Soothe does a better job of it, and we'll show you why. So let's turn this on. We're just on our factory default settings, and let's just hit play and see what it does. So already, that's a whole lot better. Let me just flip this on and off. So yeah, even with the default setting, like, I could totally use that. But let's see what we got going on here. So first we have our depth control, which is just determining how much processing it's doing. And then with that, we have the soft and hard setting. Like 99% of the time I use the soft setting and it works for almost everything. But if you've got this like totally cranked up and it's still not doing enough, you can go over to hard mode and then it'll take a whole lot more out. Like, obviously, that was just ridiculously extreme. But like I said, most of the time, soft mode works for me. So next, we have our sharpness control. And if you look over here in the graph, you can see exactly what this is doing. When we have it all the way down, it's going to be a really wide cuts. And then the farther we crank it up, it's going to be more and more tiny little narrow cuts. So lower settings kind of lend themselves more to tone shaping, and then higher ones are for if you have really, really specific frequencies that are just poking out. And then the selectiveness kind of works in the same way. So when you have it low, it's going to kind of focus primarily on one area, which again is good for more tone shaping kind of things. And then as you crank it up, you'll see less of a cut in one single area, but more narrower cuts throughout. Let me show you that. Then moving down here, we have options for stereo or mid-side. In this case, we're going to use stereo. And then we have a linking option, which in this case, since I have a guitar pan to the left and a guitar pan to the right, I'm going to bring it down to zero so that the left and right channels are working completely independently from each other. Because with this at 100, if there's a really harsh thing going on over on the left, it's going to be cutting that frequency on the right channel as well as the left, even if it's not harsh on the right. So by having it all the way down at zero, it's looking at each side independently and processing them only as each side needs it. Then we have a balance control, so you can have it process the left or right side more or less than the other. But in this case, we're just going to leave that at the default setting. Then we have an attack and release control to determine how fast or slow those cuts come in and out. To the point where if you have it on a slow release, it almost just acts like a static cut. But again, I'm just going to go back to the default settings for this example. Then we just have oversampling, sidechain, which we'll get to in a little bit, a mix control so you can blend in some of your original signal, and a trim. Now moving on from there, we have this EQ looking graph over here. And this is the threshold curve. So basically you use this to tell Soothe where to look for frequencies that are poking out. So if we turn this band off and kind of set it flat. First you have your low cut and your high cut, so you can focus in on where you want it to look. For instance, on the guitars, I really don't need it to look at anything below 1K. And you have a few different slope options here, so you can really focus in, you know, if you just want it to look between, you know, 1 and 2K or whatever, you can do that. Here, let me show you that real quick. And 
And then from there, you can use these bands, which can be set to a couple belt shapes, shelves, notch, or tilt, to tell it more where to focus. So for instance, if we really want it to look at the low end here, we could crank this up. And if we didn't want it to look at that kind of 4K upper mid range, we could pull that down. So you can see it is ducking a ton down here where we have this boosted and only a little bit here. But in the case of these guitars, that's not what we want. So let me just turn these bands off. For this, I'll bring the low cut up to around that 1K spot. Really don't need it looking below that. And then I'll turn this red band back on, which is about 4K. And let's see what that gives us. So yeah, you could see when I was sweeping it there, it was kind of focusing on the different areas of the mid-range. But in this particular example, right around 4K is really where it's bugging me. So again, let's just turn this on and off so you can see where we started and where we got. So in this case, I think we might be cutting out a little too much. So I'm just going to bring this down a little bit and I might even go a little bit sharper. So yeah, that's like a billion times better for me. And it took like 10 seconds to get there. Alternatively, if we used an EQ, if I try ducking out that 4K range, let's hear that. So it's just a simple cut like that. It's definitely cutting out a lot of the harshness, but it's also sounding a little bit dull. Alternatively, we could try and cut out a lot of small notches. Let's try that. And that's definitely better, but the problem is that those harsh frequencies aren't always there. So sometimes we're cutting it out when we don't need it cut, but then also they're moving around a bit. And these cuts are just where they are. So even if we put them into dynamic mode, which would fix the first problem, I still can't get them to move around and follow where the harsh frequencies are moving. With Soothe, once I just tell it to look in this range, it'll move the cuts around as necessary to get rid of all the nastiness and leave everything that we want to leave. So let me open up another session and we'll take a look at a few more ways that I like to use Soothe. So if you saw my video from a couple weeks ago where I talked about side chaining your kick drum and bass, in that video, I was using dynamic EQ to do it. But I think for some situations, Soothe does it in an even cooler way. So I was working on this song here and we have a kick drum, an electronic kick drum, a bass guitar, and a synth bass, all kind of fighting for the same low end. So I just wanna show you how I took care of that with Soothe. So here we're just listening to our drums and our bass. And I have this instance of Soothe on our bass track. So you can see here, I have the key input set to bus one. So then over on our kick track and our electronic kick track, we are sending to bus one. And then here in Soothe, we just have the side chain button turned on. And then just like in the last example, I'm using this EQ curve looking thing over here to tell Soothe where I want it to focus. And in this case, I am telling it only to look below like 120 hertz and really kind of around the 60 hertz range. So let's hit play and see what it's doing. So you can see from the graph here, it's cutting our low end whenever the kick hits. And I have it set to fast attack and fast release so that it's ducking the low frequencies out as soon as the kick hits and then putting them right back as soon as the kick goes away. And it's really only cutting right where the fundamental of the kick drum lives. If we hit this delta button, we can hear what the plugin is actually cutting out so we can get a better idea of what's actually going on. So that's what it's dipping each time the kick drum hits. And we're not going too crazy with it. Looked like we were maybe dipping about three decibels or so. But this would have been pretty simple to set up with a dynamic EQ or a multiband compressor. We're going to take it one step farther and show you something that those other processors wouldn't be able to do. So like I said, we also have a synth bass track in this song. Let's hear that and our bass together. So 
So I have another instance of Soothe set up on our synth bass track, and I have the key input set to bus two, and then on our bass track, we are sending that to bus two. So you can see here I have a pretty similar setup. Again, just looking at the low end, but let's see what it's doing. So what's cool about this is it's following our bass line. So instead of just cutting all the low end, we're really only cutting like the fundamental and the first overtone and leaving everything else pretty much intact. So check that out again. So that's something that a typical dynamic EQ wouldn't be able to do. And then a couple more quick examples for you here. I've got another track open. And on this one, the overheads were really pretty nasty and unpleasant and harsh. So I am using Soothe to smooth all that out and tame those harsh frequencies and make them much more listenable. So let's listen to our overheads without this and then we'll pop it in. So yeah, a lot less irritating with Soothe on. And you can see I have the sharpness turned up pretty high because I really wanted Soothe to focus in on all those narrow little spikes in the cymbals. I didn't want it to cut out just a ton of this area because there's a lot of good information in there and we don't want our cymbals to get too dark. So by having that cranked, it's just cutting out the most annoying little spikes. And then for our final example, I have this on our mix bus. So I'm going pretty subtle here. Let's see how much reduction I'm actually doing. So yeah, probably between like one and one and a half decibels of reduction. But I'm just focused on the mid-range and the top end. But basically what this one is doing for me is it allows me to turn the volume up on my speakers like one little notch louder before it starts sounding too harsh and aggressive. My ears are super sensitive to this range. So if a mix has a lot of energy in that area, it can be really hard for me to listen at loud volumes. So like I said, this smooths out the mix enough so that I can push my volume just a little bit louder without it sounding overly aggressive to me. Now you can certainly go too far with this and make your mix too soft, but this really helps me to get into the sweet spot. So let's turn this on and off and see if you can hear the difference. So like I said, it's pretty subtle but it's just making the mix as a whole a little bit smoother. Let's just crank this knob up and really exaggerate what it's doing so you can really hear the difference. So even at that extreme of a setting, you can see that Soothe still really wasn't destroying the mix. It was taking out too much for my taste, so just dialing it back a good bit makes it sit really well with me. So if you think Soothe looks cool and you want to try it, head over to oaksound.com. I might be pronouncing that wrong. It's O-E-K sound. And try it out for yourself. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. And head on over to bettermixes.com to grab a free copy of my Ultimate EQ Cheat Sheet.